Welcome to another deep dive edition of the Chicks on the Right podcast. Today, we are going to toot our own horns toot, just a toot. little bit. And not toot. just for ourselves. No. But like for our entire generation, Gen mm-hmm. X, which I am officially dubbing the second greatest generation. I think so too. Def- I agree wholeheartedly. We are because we <laughs> learned from the greatest generation. We were like under the tutelage, toot toot, mm-hmm. of the greatest generation that ever was. Right. And the boomers, which are also f- great. Mm-hmm. They're fine. Right. right? The right. boomers are good. Yeah. Um, and so, but I feel like ours was maybe the last of the great generations when it comes to loving our country and having and having high standards placed right. upon us. Well, if you think about it, we um, had a lot of the innovators, the creators, the think about like, you know, the, the guys and the women who um, invented a lot of things, who created a lot of things, who were like the, um, the innovators came from our generation. And there's you don't see a lot of that anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm sure. Think about it. Really smart and like the Steve, the Steve Jobs and the Elon Musk and the, you know, the Bezos and the, all the. Those are. I mean, these are Gen Xers, right? Yeah, but some of the people that are really good at innovation are younger than that. I mean, when I think about all the people that are involved in AI, it's a young crowd. Yeah, it's just that they are doing very destructive things. They're going to destroy the me. world. Yeah, they're going <laughs> to they're going to kill us all. <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking about like the guys who invented Twitter. I'm talking about the guys who paved the way for Twitter. Yeah. And yeah. that was our, that was our generation. So and we were just tougher, man. I mean, oh, I personally, I'm not like a super tough person. Like I would never, I would never win a street fight ever. You're tough. You're tough in a different way. You're yeah. like, you're, you're mentally tough. I mean, I'm I've been through some things. Oh, yeah. You're definitely mentally tough. I wouldn't be friends with you if you were not mentally tough. You're <laughs> mentally like a warrior. But you are but you and I together, like, I'm the person you'd probably be like, all right, she'll fight you, like, physically. <laughs> you would put me in front of you if there was a yes. physical fight. But, like, mentally, I'd put you toe-to-toe, like, in a war <laughs> of the words. I'd put you up against anybody, for sure. <laughs> this is why so, we're a yeah. team. We're a great team. Yeah, uh (laughs) exactly. Well, there's been a trend all over social media. um, And I remember, gosh, it was, I feel like it's been months now that we first shared a TikTok of a, um, there's a TikTok account by the name of Gen X Talks. Mm -hmm. And we'll share one of those um, a little bit later in today's show. But that was one of the first that I'd seen where it's a, it's a Gen Zer who has a Gen X dad. And he just puts his dad on the spot all the time to get the perspective from a Gen Xer. And this guy has 0% patience for his son. (laughs) And it's hilarious. And so it's all in good fun, but it just does show you the difference between the generations. Mm -hmm. And so we, since TikTok has been sort of the source of a lot of these recent videos, there was one that we showed in our morning show um, earlier this week of a woman specifically addressing the uh, question from a very chiseled Gen Z or Gen Y or whatever. It could be a, a younger guy. <laughs> yeah, it could be a millennial. millennial. I don't know. It could be a millennial. It's like, but we he don't was know. asking the question, why did you guys drink out of hoses? And I thought <laughs> her answer was fantastic. So let's kick off this discussion with that same video. So when y'all are saying that y'all used to drink from the hose, What, were sinks not an option? <laughs> Who's the You want me to tell him? I'll tell him. We weren't allowed in the house. <laughs> I don't know why that's so hard for people to understand. Our childhood was like one never ending episode of that TV show Survivor. Okay. We are indestructible. We've never sat in car seats. Nobody's ever given us swimming lessons. We've all been either shot with a BB gun or st- <laughs> jarred. <laughs> Television stations had to make a commercial reminding our parents that they had kids. I shit you not. Every night on the 10 p.m. news, a voice would come on and say, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? To remind our parents that they had kids. (laughs) So no, sir, shirtless with the beanie. (laughs) Sinks were not an option. (laughs) (laughs) So true. Do you remember those ads? 
Oh my gosh. I didn't until she mentioned them. And then I was yeah. like, oh my God, they really did. Now they, they did. have to just remind parents to not leave their kids in cars. That's to the leave them in the backseat. Yes. Right. For the dumbass parents that, that do that. And we're like, oh, those parents are dumbasses. But they literally <laughs> had to remind our parents that they had us at 10 p.m. Like, <laughs> do you not like have the ability to look around and go, are my kids in the room with me? <laughs> like, are they even here? Because that's the thing. We were also free range. Yeah. That's the thing. That's what I, and my daughter is 13. You know, you have your, your son, your, both of your sons are older, but, um, but your youngest is a little bit, our, my youngest is 13. Your youngest is 17, 17, yeah, 17. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I look at her and all the parents that are around me are so much younger than me. So we're older parents. And so sometimes I have to like bite my tongue because I don't fit in sometimes with some of these other, because <laughs> there's a lot of millennial parents that are parenting these 12 and 13 year old girls that we hang out with. And so I do feel a little out of place sometimes because I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer and mm. we parent a little different than these, some of these millennial parents. We do. We're a little, we are a little more free range parenty than some of these millennial parents. And so, you know, we're like, just do your own thing, make your own dinner. Like, how, do <laughs> we're not, what, what we're expected to like do these things for you, like figure it out yourself. You know, I mean, that's where like other parents, they don't parent they that coddle way. Some more. They're a little it's more a li coddly. Right. Cause we, and you and I, we're not used to that. Like, we were just in Arizona with your parents. And I mean, your parents are exceptional human beings, <laughs> just like, and I, and, and just awesome parents. And I always joke about how I want your, I mean, my mom's probably listening to this and I love my mother to death, but <laughs> I always joke about how I want your parents to adopt me because they're just <laughs> exceptional parents. And I was asking them when we were there, you know, like how, what do you do as parents? Like, how do you explain your awesome parenting? Like, talk to me about your parenting. And your mom was even like, we weren't that great. You know, we really didn't do anything <laughs> that special. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't coddle the kids. Like, I don't even know if she used that word, but I remember her saying, we didn't do anything special. We just were there. You know what I mean? We just were sort of present, but like we let the kids free range. We let them do whatever. They just, they just happened to turn out. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's, it's interesting the way that she described it because I think she and your dad were probably a lot, a lot like a, a lot of other parents in that generation where they didn't coddle. They didn't like overly nurture. Mm -hmm. They just were parents of Gen Xers, you know, in that, in that generation where we all just fended for ourselves a little bit more. And now we regard our parents as pretty cool because we ended up like self-sufficient and independent and, you know, reliant on ourselves. And we didn't, we're not blaming the world for our problems. We right. just, we're, we're a, a different breed of human Gen Xers. Yeah, I think so too. You know, and I, and, and so we were taught independence at such early ages. Now, granted some, I mean, like our culture sucks so hard now that yeah, it does. In, in some ways that you and I would probably love to parent that same way we were parented. Yes. It's not possible because right. the world is so unsafe in yes. so many ways. Um, but you know, it's true. Like we, we let ourselves in to the house after school when both of our parents were working their full-time jobs. Yes. And so I had, my mom uh, gave me a leather, like it was a, a leather a necklace that had a little, it almost looked like a Native American pouch, like a little leather pouch oh that, my gosh. that I would hang around my neck. And that is what I wore my key in. And I wore it every single day. I think I have it in like my third grade photo. You do? Um, do you still yeah. have it? Do you still actually possess? I don't the think I still have the actual pouch. Oh my god! But it gosh. was just this little triangular leather pouch, and that's where my house key went. And my parent, you know, I'd get home at what three, three thirty, whatever, yeah. from school, and then my parents wouldn't come until five six? thirty or six o'clock. Right. And I had to, I knew that I was supposed to get certain things done, homework, mm -hmm. whatever. Right. And that's just how it was. It's completely different than that. Totally now. different. Totally different. Now I was the same way. Like I was a latchkey kid, my parents, same way I would come in. And I remember, um, there were some days where I like, I didn't have a thing around my neck, but my parents would hide the key, like in the yard somewhere. And there were days where I'm like, oh shit, where's the key? <laughs> like I couldn't find the key. And so I was super adept at breaking into my own house. 
Oh my like, god! I remember going into the back, and we had a three-story house at the time. Like we had a basement, a main floor, and then an upper floor. It was like a tall house, and I remember going to the back, like climbing up onto the deck of the main floor and breaking into my kitchen because <laughs> I couldn't find the key. And I'm like, well, I got to get into the house because I mean, I got to do the stuff. I got to make my mac and cheese. I got to like do my homework. <laughs> you I got to watch do- Gilligan's Island. Right. I got to watch, you know, the things in the all the afternoon shows. Exactly. And this is the, I remember breaking into my own house. And like, can you imagine if somebody would have seen a kid like in my because there are people backed up to our house, like in the backyard, you can mm-hmm. see other houses. Can you imagine watching a kid breaking into their kitchen or just anybody? But most people would call the cops. I can't believe right. I didn't go to jail breaking into my own house. Or that and your the, parents didn't for neglecting you. Right. That's what would happen now. <laughs> exactly. Today, they, my parents, you're right. My parents are probably They go to jail for a plethora of reasons. Like just, I would sit on my dad's lap and steer the car like through a, a, a busy neighborhood. Yeah. I was like nine years old and I would do this. I mean, the things that they allowed us to do and just, and not to mention like just being outside until ungodly like i don't know nine o'clock at night Mm -hmm. and i would be out i can't i would never let my kid do that now oh my gosh and you'd be gone we'd be gone from all day day yeah all day until it turned dark Mm -hmm. and then sometimes a little after dark and and there was never a worry there was Mm -mm. never checking in no everybody knew that everybody other everybody else's parents were sort of Watching. All kind of looking out for the kids, but yeah. we would often go to the, a park that was like blocks and blocks away, or a swimming pool, <laughs> like that a was mile blocks or two. And blocks away. Yeah, yeah. And it, you didn't. And nobody thought twice about that. Yeah. Everybody just expected the kids could handle being kids on their own, and we and did. that they and you had no idea. Like your parents had no idea if you were fed or watered. <laughs> I mean, or alive. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you were gone all twelve hours. You were gone. Yeah, and then and it was fine. It was completely fine. And it then, fine. you know, they so for some, you would just be called home by some call. Like there'd be somebody who would whistle for <laughs> you or like scream for you in yep. the neighborhood. And then all the kids would just come home from that mom call. Like there'd be some mom in the neighborhood or somebody would just call some bell that would get you in the neighborhood. <laughs> you'd come home and then you'd be like, all right, I'm home. You know, either that or it would be dinner. Like maybe sometimes yeah. I'd come home for dinner. But I mean, for the most part, we were just so incredibly free range. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, that's, we were just really resilient in that respect. It was different. So different back then. I don't know. I look at my daughter, I'm like, would she be able to do that? I don't, I don't know if my 13 year old, I guess maybe, I don't know if she'd want to do that. It just would be such a different experience for her than what it is right now. Because now I feel like kids, their days are so, um, planned. Mm. Everything is so like you have to do this at this time and this at this time. And then you have this activity and that activity. And we didn't have that, you know, even like with sports and all that kind of stuff. I even think sports now are different because. Oh, my God. So different. Yeah. It's completely. It's utterly, totally and completely right. different. It's and so I don't di- know that it's better. I don't think it's better because I was able to play and do a lot of different things when I was younger. Now it's like you have to pick your sport and you have to you know, if you're, you have to be really good at it and it's, you, you have to pick one thing to be good yeah. at. And, and I don't know if that's, I don't think that that's necessarily better. I think it was greater for us because we could try a lot of different things and do a lot of different things and meet a lot of different people. And I think it was better for kids back then because they didn't have to be freaking adults at age 13. Yeah. And, um, you know, be kids. They could and be remember, kids. Remember, I know you did this too. I just know it. So there's a six year split between me and my sister. And uh-huh. whenever there was a road trip, not only were there no seat belts in the back seat, but we also <laughs> had a hatchback at one point and we would lay the hatchback seats down and we would create this giant bed in the back with all kinds of <laughs> yes, snacks and blankets yes. and everything, pillows. It was like and then fort. we would also draw an imaginary line between oh, yeah. the two of us. And mm-hmm. if she dared cross the line. Oh my God. Oh my God. It was, was like hell, hell on earth. Hell on earth. <laughs> Not only that, but my mom, like, I remember my mom and dad would give us, like, say they gave you, like, each a cookie, you know? Yeah. And then I would, like, hoard mine. I'd, like, right. I'd, I'd pretend I was eating it and I'd hoard it. And my sister would eat hers and I'd be like, oh, I still have some left. I still have some cookie left. I mean, we would torment the crap out of each other on those car rides. 
It would just be like <laughs> picking and it's, and then I would ride in the back window. We had a, yeah. an old mobile sedan. It was like white with a baby blue top. It was the most hideous car <laughs> back then. I think it was like really beautiful, but it was, it was so hideous by today's standards. And I would ride in the back window of On that the car. Yeah. I mean, yeah. can you imagine or driving the station wagons, right? That had the way back the, and the wood. The wood yeah. panel. Yes. Yeah. But you would sit facing the driver behind you, right? If you were in the way back, that seat faced out the window. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's complete. Now, imagine if you were building your little backseat paradise, you know what I mean? <laughs> and you weren't, you weren't seat belted. Your parents would get arrested. They would get oh, totally. pulled over and ticketed uh -huh. and it would be ch all kinds of child abuse. Oh charges. my God. It's kind of like car seats. When I bought my, my daughter's first car seat, I was like, wait, there are different kinds and you have to put it backwards and then forwards. And what, <laughs> what are, what's even happening? I don't we understand. We didn't even sit in one. Wait, I know exactly. My, the, my seat belt was my mom's arm. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like we'd stop. We had, I remember we had this old, um, the VW Beetle. Do you yeah. remember those VW Beetles? And I remember when I was itty bitty, I was like six when this happened and we got pulled over by a cop because it was too noisy. It was making, I just the remember. Car? <laughs> yeah. The car was too noisy. I think it was just making too much noise. It was such a piece of shit. And we got pulled over and I was just like, what is going on? And we got pulled over because of the, it was just so I think it was just so awful that something was wrong with it. I remember I'm like, are you sp like, are she going too fast or what? And oh I think God. he was just like, is something wrong with your car, ma'am? And like, it was because it was such a giant. <laughs> She's like, I don't know. I just turned up the radio. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. It was so now when you went on car trips and you went on road trips and you got to your destination, this is another thing I think is so funny because like nowadays I would never let my daughter, cause we live in Texas and ever since she was itty bitty and I've had skin cancer like removed from my face. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really hypersensitive to that, but I would never let my daughter go out without like gobs of sunscreen on her body. Oh my God. We never wore it. Baby oil. I uh, slathered. And the, and the thing, the reflector plate. Yeah. <laughs> <Right? laughs> tin foil. <laughs> tin foil on cardboard. You'd like right. put it on cardboard and like shove it in front of your face and you would get completely fried. I had so many like blisters on my body, like so many times. I'd be like, no, it's fine. I'll turn into tan. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> It's totally fine. Just it's give fine. It a couple days. I have third fine. degree burns, but I'm fine. I mean, I'm totally fine. And it's going to look savage in like three days. It's going to be great. It's fine. And then sun in. You remember the sun in? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. Like we didn't get highlights in our hair. We didn't go to hairdressers to get highlights. <laughs> we used sun in and it was or orange and juice. we liked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder Donald Trump has orange hair. He's a child of the 80s. That's exactly right. He's a man well, of that, the 80s. Well, that same, um, that same video, I mean, the, there's been so many responses to that video. And we have another one um, from a, another mom who is just as irritated at, like, <laughs> at all these silly questions about drinking from hoses and all that stuff. So let's do that one next. Who let Gen X off the hook? Why are we talking shit about those? Because y'all don't want to get <laughs> fucked up. Because y'all don't want this work. <laughs> Because we the last generation of the real mother you ever met. That's why Gen X don't f with y'all. We don't f with nobody, actually. We just chill, go to work, and come home. We ain't had no choice. We was latchkey kids, for real. We ain't had no therapy. We couldn't deal with our depression. We had to eat that shit and keep it moving. So f out of here. That's why y'all f with us. But don't f with us. <laughs> That's a really great point, though. Like... There are way more depressed people and people with mental illnesses now than there were mm -hmm. when we were kids. Have you noticed that? Oh, yeah, because people want that. It's very handy for anybody to be able to play a victim card of any kind. Yeah. And so now, you know, you can't bully. There's all these anti-bullying rules where really, I think growing up, getting a little bullied helped thicken your skin. Oh, it's totally. what made you prepared to deal with some with of the, life's hardships. Yeah, the real world. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. I, now we've gone so soft. Everyone uh, has gone so my God. soft. Incredibly soft. And I think social media is like completely screwed up our society too. Like I loved living in an era where there was no social media. Yeah. And all the, cause think of all the stupid crap that we did do, like all the, the, the partying and the fun stuff that we were able to do. And, and just the, I don't know, the living of life and not having to document everything. 
Mm-hmm. It was nice not having to do that. Like we've took some pictures and then we had, like, I, I just sent my daughter to camp and I, I sent her with two um, cameras, like disposable cameras. And she was like, what am I supposed to do with these? <laughs> and I had to show her how to use an actual, oh I was like, you have to wind it and you click it and you wind it. And she was like, oh, and then what do we do with them? And like, <laughs> then you get them developed. That's still a thing. You, you can still buy those like a drugstore, like at CVS or a Walgreens. And I had to show her how to, use, I mean, she was so far removed from that technology. <laughs> and she's going to be like, but wh- how do I filter them? Where's I know. The- <laughs> Where's the Instagram filter? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the thing is that they don't have a concept of of waiting on, mm-hmm. on what it's going to, you know, she's going to take pictures and then she has to wait. She has to sit and wait and be patient to see what those pictures are going to look like in, I don't know, yeah. three weeks. And so, it's, oh my God. Right. I mean, this is the thing. And we did that. So we had cameras, but we, you know, we could always get the pictures back and be like, Oh my God, that's an incriminating picture. And then throw it away. Right, if it was a right. bad picture of, if it was like a flash of our boob or something, we could get rid of it. <laughs> and you it was know, gone forever. It was like, gone for real. For, forever. But see <laughs> on the internet, everything lives forever. And somebody was saying that like our social media was somebody said on our, um, on our Facebook, uh, insiders that, that our social media was bathroom walls. Oh my like gosh. writing things on bathroom walls about people or whatever, yeah, or just, you know, passing notes to one another. Mm-hmm. Like if you remember that movie, 16 candles, um, remember in the beginning one, yeah. did you touch it? <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, remember when we used, I mean, I wrote notes to everybody. Oh my God. Same. And then you my, would fold them like in the cool ways and then yes, you would do the things. The accordions like, and like, yeah. I mean, I have notes from like old boyfriends, from best friends. I mean, that's like, that's how you get to know people really mm-hmm. get to know them was like writing notes and like learning so much about them and then getting on the phone and talking to your new best friend for three hours at a time. I mean, that's. Yeah. I miss those days. That's, and I feel like that made us like, we were just, we were more, um, we were more of like a, an intimate generation. Like we really got to know one another and we were, I don't know. I don't, I I think when it, when it comes to mental illness and, and stuff like that, we just, we were more, um, we were more into each other and getting to know each other and it wasn't so surfacey. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And it's weird, especially because we're in such an oversharing culture. Yes. So you would think it would be the reverse that like mm-hmm. people are so quick to share everything, but so much of what they share is superficial. And it's that's the so super, it's so fake. It's all so fake. It's not, yeah. you're not getting below the surface. You know, it's like every, that's what we were, we were so much more um, human with one another. And I think that that it, it's like that goes without saying our generation was so different when it came to that. We really got to know one another and it's and it, we had like a handful of friends rather than, you know, a thousand friends on Facebook, which really mm-hmm. aren't your friends. And I think that that this generation now, I think that they're they're hungry for real intimacy. And we had that as yeah. a generation. We understood that. And I think we were the last real generation to to understand that. And that's sad to me. You it know? is really sad. Yeah. It is really sad. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We have a couple more videos. There's one of a woman. I forget her name, but she's but she's become pretty popular on both Instagram and TikTok. And she's like our generation. She's got like the purple hair and she's just yeah. cool. Yeah. And so she's also got some stuff to say about what things were like back in our day. Gen X kid growing up. Well, it looks something like this. You wake up early and immediately put on your play clothes. Grab a pop tart, maybe a handful of Captain Crunch, <laughs> and head up with friends. When you meet up with your friends, they're all riding their bikes, and you now look like a miniature version of a motorcycle gang headed out to play with dangerous things in dangerous places. You'll travel blocks, if not miles, away from home, and you'll probably cross several major streets, possibly a major highway, before you head back. On your way back, you'll probably stop to climb a tree, wade in a creek, skip some rocks, or play on the railroad tracks. And then you'll get back before the street lights come on, just in time for dinner. That is about 12 hours later than when you left, and your parents just. <laughs> that you haven't been home the whole time. You'll wash your hands and sit down to eat your TV dinner on a TV tray while watching TV on the couch alone until it's time for bed. It's true. Your bed is a fort made out of your pillows and a blanket. And you'll drift off to sleep while reading with a flashlight about adventures you can only dream of. And you'll do it all again tomorrow. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it was great. It was. It was great. I mean, it was like, <laughs> and the 80s were great. And one thing, too, it, it, I think about like growing up in the 80s as a Gen Xer is, you know, I, I, another thing that I can compare my daughter to is like movies and music were better. Yeah. The, the, the music, obviously, I'm sorry, I will fight people like until the end, our music was freaking better. It just was For real. Oh and because, and as evidenced by the fact that they're sampling our music now. So mm-hmm. if it wasn't better, you wouldn't be freaking sampling it. You'd be coming up with your own freaking music and same with movies. They're yeah. redoing a lot of movies now too, because they have no creativity now. But my, like my daughter doesn't really even enjoy the movies anymore. Like I want to take her to movies and she doesn't really like movies. And I think part of that is because they don't have any, an attention span to sit yeah. for two and a half hours in a movie theater, or, you know, an hour and a half, two hours in a movie theater. But I love the movies. Oh Didn't my you gosh, love I the movies? Too. Yes, oh. I absolutely loved it. And I love that you could go to a matinee for a dollar twenty-five. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I just remember going with my like I saw Dirty Dancing. I'm not even kidding you, like nine times in the theater. And it's so different now because my daughter just doesn't like she doesn't ha- I want to take her to movies and she doesn't have a big interest in movies and it breaks my heart. And part of it is because movies kind of suck now, but I, well, but like yeah. Guardians, but like Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm thinking, okay, I can get her to go see that movie. And it's not, it's just not the same anymore. It's not. Well, think about how different it is too. Just like if you were to say, and I know this is true with my own kid. If I were to say, te- you know, even five years ago when it was like playing age, when he was 12, if I would have said to him, hey, why don't you go outside and play? He would have no freaking idea what to do. Right. No idea because they don't go and like wade through creeks or play on railroad tracks or climb trees or build forts. They don't do any of that. Yeah. And they don't, they have no desire to do it. We did because that we didn't have a computer or a screen Mm -hmm. to just stare at all day. So it was completely different. We had to find things to occupy our time and our interest. Yeah. That makes me sad. I know. Which makes and I think it w- it's what makes us grouchy. Like, because we've got this great video from Gen X Talks that we mentioned earlier of this father who has these conversations with his much younger son about what it's like to be Gen X. And he's grouchy. I think he speaks for all of us with that yes. grouchiness, <laughs> just with the level of impatience <laughs> we have for this, for, for this up and coming generation. Let's look mm-hmm. at that. Gen X Talks. Dad, how's my little ray of sunshine today? I've been thinking. Yeah. And I think your generation and mine aren't really that different. Yeah, how so? Well, I'm sure Grandpa used to feel the same about you that you feel about us, right? Yeah, I'm sure he scratched his head more than once about me, so what? Oh, wait, see? <laughs> we're, we're the same. So why do you pick on us I'm so not much? The same. Well, you didn't like it. Okay, you didn't like it when Grandpa did it to you. So why would you do it to us? <laughs> because we're different. They're, you know, at the end of the day, Grandpa and I could still sit down and talk. And later in life, we could have a beer. We had, we had common ground, like loyalty to family and country. You guys don't have shit. Well, my generation has common ground, too. With us? You think you have common ground with my generation? My generation was happy to have a job of cold beer and working on their car on a Saturday. You f***ers aren't happy until you wake up and tear down some random American tradition just because it's there. The only thing we got in common, son, is the doctor we're going to use to take my boot out of your f***ing ass. You can leave now. Thanks for the vid, Dad. (laughs) I love that kid, too. He's like, thanks for the video, Dad. Thanks a lot. Appreciate I it. I love that. I love that channel so I know. much. Gen so, X talks. <laughs> he's grouchy, but I understand his grouchiness because they because this generation really is trying to dismantle a lot of the stuff that that our generation, the previous generation, built for them. Yeah, exactly. You know? And they are and like you and I talked on our daily show about how patriotism is at an all time low, mm-hmm. love of country is at an all time low. That breaks my heart. It just, yeah. it just, and it's like, it, you can't, what are you supposed to do about that? It's like, they don't well, have no why idea. Bitter. It's why we're, we were bitter yeah. towards the other generations. Cause it's just like you said, they are tearing down mm-hmm. what we built for them. Yeah. And then for them to not show love of country, a country that has been so good to us is just, it's infuriating. It is. It's infuriating. It's just nauseating. I hate it. It just makes me, it does. It makes me mad. It makes all of us mad, which is like, we're, we're sort of that grouchy generation. And then when I see shirtless dude in the beanie, which I don't understand, like, why are you shirtless in a, if you're cold, put on a freaking shirt, dude. I don't understand how that makes you like, it, that's dumb. It's, there's a disconnect there. But anyways, I, I just, there's a lot that I don't understand. And I, I just, you know, I think they're going to be sorry mm. because their country is, they blame 
what other people for their problems. They want right. their, their college educations to be paid for by other yeah. people. And they, you know, they, they feel entitled to so much stuff. And it's like, we just didn't have, we didn't have that. We didn't we have a sense. Care business, man. We just took care of it. Damn straight. And that is why Gen X, I will maintain, is the second greatest generation. Amen to that. Amen, sister. <laughs> I'm right there with you. And, and, and I feel like, you know, we have a case. 